Hello, Malcolm speaking. This video is going to be about the first Spitfires obtained by the Israeli Air Force in 1948. There are two groups we're going to talk about. The first consists of two aircraft built up from scrap, and the second group is that purchased from the Czechoslovakian government. As Britain's mandate to control Palestine expired, and the State of Israel came into existence on the 15th of May 1948, the Royal Air Force withdrew from its bases and left behind a rich cachet of aircraft wrecks in dumps adjacent to its old air bases. One of these bases had formerly been the home of No. 32 and No. 208 squadrons, where Israeli Air Force technicians recovered three Spitfire Mark 9 fuselages and a large quantity of spare parts. Among this collection of material was No. 208 Squadron's aircraft coded RGW. It had been field modified for voter reconnaissance purposes and most likely formed the basis of Dalit 130, the first Israeli Air Force Spitfire. Dalit 130's wings and engine were scavenged from an Egyptian Spitfire Mark 9 that had been shot down by anti-aircraft fire on the 15th of May 1948. D-130 had completed its assembly and taxing trials, and by late August or early September 1948, it was handed over to No. 101 Squadron, the Israeli Air Force's first fighter squadron. Before we continue on, I'm going to touch briefly on the type that preceded the Spitfire in Israeli usage. This is the Avia S-199. The S-199 was a Czech-built post-war version of the Messerschmitt 109. However, it was equipped with a different engine, and the engine revolved in the opposite direction compared with what the airframe was optimized for. It was not a good handling aircraft. So, here's a brief clip from an interview I did with Aaron Red Finkel in 2002. Mr. Finkel flew both the RV S199 that he refers to as a Messerschmitt and the Spitfire. I gotta tell you, <laughs> we call it the best of the, of the Messerschmitt. I mean, the names we call that aeroplane. I mean, every time you look, there was one sticking with his nose in the ground, you know? Right. The tail up. It was a horrible aeroplane. <laughs> it was not the original Messerschmitt. And now back to the Spitfires. By October 1948, Dalit 130 had been renumbered 2001 and given the radio call sign number Black 10. The aircraft was stripped back to bare metal, recognition stripes were painted on the rudder in red and white, and the aircraft was now optimized for reconnaissance duties, as we see here in this Israeli Defense Force archive photograph. This side view shows a number of relevant features, such as the red nose, the 101 Squadron badge, the new black 10, and the new serial 2001 painted under the tail. Within a few weeks of Dalit 130 entering service, Dalit 131, the second Israeli Spitfire, was also ready to be handed over. Like the other aircraft, Dalit 131 was built from a scavenged RAF fuselage, teamed up with a set of wings scavenged from an Egyptian Spitfire shot down by the RAF over Ramat David on the 22nd of May 1948. Both of the new Spitfires were a tremendous boost to 101 Squadron in the air superiority role. Neither was equipped for ground attack work. In October, Dalid 131 became number 2002 White 11. Also, it was given a full camouflage repaint, and I have shown it here in green and brown with a light blue lower surfaces. Alex Yoffe publishes a photograph of 2002 White 11 in his book Spitfire Star of Israel, published by Ventura Publications in 1996. It shows the aircraft over the Mediterranean near a United Nations C-47 in mid-1949. It has a white rudder rather than a red and white striped rudder, which is unusual, and it has the white-blue-white fuselage identification bands. Also, the national marking has a standard-sized white disc, but a much smaller blue star. 
In English, we often refer to this as the Star of David, but my understanding, it is more correctly translated as Shield of David. And now on to the next part of our story. This is to do with aircraft purchase from Czechoslovakia in 1948. Now, when the Soviet-backed communist regime came to power in 1948, they decreed that Western aircraft should be dropped from the Czech Air Force inventory, and this precipitated the sale of Spitfires to Israel for much-needed hard currency. Secret negotiations between the Czech and Israeli government agencies saw agreement on terms of sale that included aircraft, spares, and pilot training. The 1948 sale comprised 59 aircraft at a unit price of $23,000. The Israelis considered this a good deal, all things considered, and aircraft selection and preparation to export the Spitfires began in June 1948. There were two pilot training courses in Czechoslovakia, which in later years became known as the Minus 2 and Minus 1 courses because they preceded the Israeli Air Force's first official training courses. Part of the fascination of the Israeli Spitfire story, especially for colours and markings enthusiasts, is that these aircraft passed from British to Czech to Israeli hands, and often they were not fully repainted by the new owners. We're going to take a look at two examples of Czech aircraft before they were taken to Israel. This is Spitfire Mark 9 TE554 with the codes A708 on the side. In 1948, it was serving with the Czech Air Force Training Academy. TE-554 had served with No. 310 Squadron RAF, which was a Czech squadron, and then with the 10th Fighter Regiment, 1st Air Division, based in Prague. In Israeli service, TE-554 eventually became the famous all-black painted Spitfire, flown by Urza Weissman in the 1960s, and this aircraft is now preserved in the Israeli Air Force Museum. Our second example is TE-524, codes JT-5. The JT-coded Spitfires are of the 4th Fighter Regiment, 2nd Air Division, Czech Air Force. The changeover date from the RAF to Czechoslovakia was the 30th of August 1945, with the old RAF codes and squadron numbers being replaced by those of the new fighter regiments. On the 15th of February 1946, the Czechs simply recamouflaged some areas with their own insignia. Note how these aircraft have a red spinner with a white backing plate, and this was adopted by the Israelis as part of their own markings. And now it was on to Israel. Of the 59 Spitfires purchased from Czechoslovakia, it was attempted to fly 18 to Israel from Czechoslovakia. This took place as two missions, codenamed Velvita 1 and Velvita 2. Velvita apparently was a brand of sunscreen used in Israeli Air Force survival kits. The first mission, Velvita 1, comprised six aircraft taking off on the 24th of September from Czechoslovakia heading to Yugoslavia. A town called Podgorica was where they were to land. This was a distance of around 300 miles. The six aircraft arrived, however one pilot forgot to put his undercarriage down and damaged his aircraft on landing. Three days later, on the 27th of September, the five surviving Spitfires took off for the long 700-mile flight to Israel. Interestingly, they were equipped with long-range tanks that included ex-Czech German-style underwing tanks. Trouble struck two of the aircraft several hours after takeoff, and these two aircraft were eventually interned in Greece. So, this resulted in just three of the six eventually getting through to Israel. The Velveta 2 mission commenced on the 18th of December 1948, with 12 aircraft being successfully prepared for the long flight home. On the 18th, the 19th and the 20th, groups of aircraft set out flying from Czechoslovakia to Yugoslavia. One interesting and unusual aspect of Velveta 2 is that the Yugoslavs insisted that these aircraft be painted in Yugoslav Air Force markings 
for the Czechoslovakia to Podgorica flight, which was duly done. Above we see a photograph taken in Yugoslavia of Velvita 2 aircraft. These three aircraft have the standard RAF late war colour scheme of dark green and ocean grey upper surfaces with medium sea grey under surfaces. Note the hand painted Yugoslav national markings required for the flight into Yugoslavia. The number 632 on the nearest machine's fin relates to the old Czech serial number and the RAF serial as well of SL632. At this stage the aircraft were unarmed and not fitted with radios as these had been removed in order to fit an extra fuel tank behind the pilot. On the Velveeta flights communication was by sight only. Now we have a colour side view of the same aircraft and again we see the long range fuel tanks which were of the German style manufactured in Czechoslovakia. Now I'm going to cover a sample of the aircraft that were sold by Czechoslovakia to Israel and what happened to them in Israel. First up we have Aaron Red Finkel, whose voice we heard earlier, standing beside Spitfire 2004 White 14. Uh, this is after a landing accident on the 5th of January 1949. The aircraft was damaged when a tyre blew out. This aircraft was one of the three Velveeta 1 Spitfires and it has the 101 Squadron badge on the port nose. It has underwing blue-white-blue blue identification stripes. There are none on the upper wings. And its serial is hand-painted around about 10 centimetres high in black digits under the tailplane. Note the bomb racks. Note the severe light grey exhaust staining. Normally this is due to lean running. And we can see the remains of the temporary Yugoslav fuselage roundel showing as an off-colour around the border of the Star of David. Now we're taking a look at aircraft 2011 with the code WHITE26. It's of 101 Squadron in mid-1949. This aircraft's camouflage scheme would be typical of an Israeli Spitfire at the time. It was a Velveeta II machine which arrived in Israel in the standard late World War II RAF camouflage of ocean grey, dark green and medium sea grey. The ocean grey has been oversprayed with brown. Next we have a Velveeta I Spitfire late in its career. This photograph is taken at Ramat David in 1953 while the aircraft was with number 105 Squadron. It seems to have a freshly painted coat of the Israeli Air Force dark blue and brown scream with light blue-grey lower surfaces and you can see the 105 Squadron badge on its cowling. According to Air Britain's Spitfire International, the original serial of this aircraft is unknown. When it first arrived in Israel, it was Dalid 132, and it arrived on the 27th of September 1948. Originally as Dalid 132, it went to 101 Squadron, and then it went to 105 Squadron in August 1950. It was eventually written off in March 1954. Now we have a rather battered looking Spitfire near the end of its life with the Israeli Air Force. A new operational training unit was split off from 101 Squadron in December 1950 and given the title 105 Flight. And this eventually became 105 Squadron. While it was an operational training unit, it could be called into action at any time. Note that this aircraft has a 105 Squadron emblem on its cowling, but it has the rudder of a 101 Squadron aircraft. You can tell it's 101 because the dark colour near the top would be red, whereas 105 Squadron was yellow and black, with the yellow, the lighter colour, at the top. And that concludes our video. I want to make a particular thank you to the late Levi Isaac who sent me a group of photographs in 1997 completely out of the blue. Levy was a ground crew member with the Israeli Air Force in the 1950s. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe as it certainly helps me build the channel.